Um, I, start, I came from India when I was two years old to Chicago, um, immigrated here with my parents. After moving to Chicago, we moved to Colorado, uh, back to Chicago, then San Francisco, back to Chicago. My mom just loved Chicago a lot. Um, and then finally, we settled in New Jersey, where I went to school near Princeton. Um, I started my first company in, in high school, which is an advertising network. Didn't do so well, but I learned a lot about entrepreneurship, how to raise funding, how to network uh, one-on-one, so I skipped a lot of classes. Um, and just locked myself up in my principal's office, just calling people, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, billionaires. Uh, there's a, there was something called Google Phone Book a couple of years ago. How many of you remember Google Phone Book? So apparently, you could actually look up people's addresses and phone numbers on there. So what I did, I went through the Forbes 400 of all the top billionaire entrepreneurs and millionaires, and I basically looked up their phones, phone numbers and addresses and called them up as many as many as possible. Uh, majority of them slammed the phone on me, but some of them actually stuck around and gave me, gave me a lot of feedback and actually uh, are still mentors today. Um, fast forward, I came to NYIT. I convinced the dean of uh, school management, uh, Dean Bronico, to uh, help me out with scholarships. Um, I had a scholarship to come to NYIT, but the, the difference of the tuition uh, was still too much for me to actually come to New York. And if you, for those of you who know me, um, I always wanted to come to New York. I had pictures of New York in my high school locker, and I made it a point to uh, make it here uh, one way or the other. And so I convinced him to give me additional scholarships um, and help him out building something called a new incubator at NYIT. Um, after this was in 2011, the fall of 2011, I enrolled at the New York Institute of Technology, uh, started my second company, which is an advertising agency focused on social media marketing. That eventually, about a year later, about eight months later, allowed me to move into New York uh, financially. Um, so I was financially uh, stable, if you will, or I was at least making money um, more so than many of my colleagues or my peers in, in class. Um, and then I interned at two uh, agencies, a PR agency and an advertising agency. And that's really where I got the idea, the market need, which every entrepreneur needs to have in order to validate their business idea. I found the market need for a visual collaboration tool. And that's what we call Canvas. Now Canvas, how many of you have seen Minority Report or Iron Man, the two movies? Do you remember the part where they're navigating the computer without touching it? They're simply waving in front of it and you know, dragging files, dragging ideas, and you know, collaborating with themselves or other people, right? So we basically said, where is that in the creative space? And we couldn't find anything. So we, we used uh, Basecamp, we tried using Trello, we tried using Asana. These were collaboration tools, task management tools, and project management, and nothing would really come up. And, you know, we were creative people, and so we went to the wall and basically covered our walls with paper, marker, and chalk. And I said, we need that Minority Report, or Prezi, if you will, the visual collaboration tool for anyone and any, everyone to use in the creative space. Uh, so I raised a little under $100,000 in my sophomore year, going into my junior year in college, uh, from the first, uh, the first investors in Pinterest, Twitter, Facebook, and Foursquare. I literally hustled my way to the front of the stage at every conference, every meetup I could find, um, and talked to them and got their business cards. Um, this picture actually is seeing someone's shoulder, the green shirt is actually Brian Cohen. If you know Brian Cohen, the chairman of New York Angels, um, I called him for 30 days, three, three to four times a day. He didn't, he didn't mind it at all. And I finally cornered him. I said, on 30th day, I know you're speaking at CE week, which was Consumer Electronics Week. Can I get five minutes of your time? He ended up giving me 15. And that picture is taken within two minutes of him saying, yes, I'll give you my check. And so, yes, I'll give you what? I'll give you my check. Um, and, so, and so that's just one story, and I'll talk a bit more about other uh, stories of hustle. Um, and, and then uh, fast forward, uh, about a year and a half later, I just graduated uh, from NYIT about three weeks ago, which is awesome. Uh, we've raised about $1 million in funding as our second round of funding, and we're looking to do another Series A, or looking to do a Series A in about a year from this, this point now. Um, thank you. One, uh, some of the few, few, um, few tidbits, if I will, or pieces of advice I'll talk about is knowing exactly which kind of investor you want. So I've been pitching to probably well over 500 investors, not only in New York, but also Silicon Valley. Some of the funds that came out, were, which were up and coming funds or you know, new funds, and maybe entrepreneurs that sold their company and looking to invest in other entrepreneurs, know who you're pitching to because many of the investors actually don't know what they're doing. So what ended up happening was I had to educate them in terms of how to invest. This is very weird for a college student to do. Um, and so if you have enough time, if you have uh, that expectation already laid out, it's much easier to have that conversation with investors. My advice would be to get professional angel investors like Brian Cohen or Jeff Pulver, some of our angel investors, or Golden Seeds. 
if you're a woman. Um, get professional organizations, funds, venture capital firms, or investors to teach you and mentor you. It should not be that you have to mentor them or educate them because you have, you have your own business to run as well. Um, some of the other things I would say is wearing, you know, differentiate yourself in, in an environment like this. So a lot of the meetups we would go to, uh, you see entrepreneurs pitching to every investor, almost like a speed dating session, right? What I did was actually wear this t-shirt, which uh, if I can hold up for a second. You can see here, I actually had the Canvas logo all over me. And on the back, I had the same logo as well and a smiley face. And so what ended up happening was when I was on subways, angel investors would just come up to me and say, what the heck are you working on? And, and just pitch, pitch them on the subway itself. I did a pitch on the one line at 18th Street at one point. Uh, it was just hilarious. And if you differentiate yourself by wearing different things or having an, for example, I had an iPad strapped to my side as well and entrepreneurs and angel investors would just come to me and say, where the heck did you get a necklace for an iPad? I was like, this is where I got it and this is what I'm working on. Um, and so it's just like different things, like minor dif little things. It's not about spending extra money. It's about differentiating yourself as a personality, as a person, as a human being. Um, and I can go into more, more uh, pieces of advice and tips and stories when I get into panel. Thank you. Thank you very much.